guys, so I'm just going to quickly walk you through Edpuzzle. So this is um, the landing page of Edpuzzle when you get here. Uh, then what you need to do is you can see down the left hand side here uh, each of my classes that I have. So I ran a workshop for Atchbar uh, that looked at um, flipped learning and so I made a flipped video for them. Uh, I've got a distance student, I've got my Sydney FC class and then I've got a year 10 class that I've just made. So if you want to ever add an extra um, class you can just click add class, enter your class name. So let's go year 9 PDH. Uh, and then just click press that tick and that'll add it uh, to your list. You can then at the top right over here uh, choose to invite your students. So you can invite students. You can do that by sharing this code with them or sending them this link. You can do that by email or you can even share it uh, with your Google Classroom feed or tweet it. Um, down here, if I already have classes set up in Google Classroom, I can click import from Google Classroom uh, it'll first ask me to sign in and then it's going to say alright these are my classes from Google Class, do I want to import them? You can click import, uh, mine are already here. So these are our classes, uh, then you want to look at what you can actually do with Edpuzzle in terms of the content. So we go to the top and we're looking at my content and this is all the content that I've already got. So if we click on search Search is where you find all of the videos and stuff uh, that you want, might want to edit or that you might want to use with your students. And so uh, you can see here on the left hand side uh, under the private list is just my school. So these are just videos that I might upload straight into Edpuzzle uh, that are just for my school. And so this will be my school channel and I don't um, use anything on my school channel. I use YouTube all the time. Um, if I click on Edpuzzle though, I'm actually going to get other people's um, videos that they've already edited, that they've already put interactions uh, into, which then mean uh, that I don't need to worry about it. And so if I go here and I want to find um, something for energy systems, let's see if they've got anything. All right, so here we go, relative contribution for energy systems, and we'll have a look here. So I can uh, click on it and it will open up the video for me. Um, I can then have a look at what each of these questions is. If I press on it, which energy system requires oxygen? Hi, it's Jason from Activate Ed. Today we're going to talk about interplay of energy systems. So we're going to use the 400 Whoa, meters as an example. So it's fair to assume at the start of the 400 meters that the athletes are beginning with all. All right. For some reason that wouldn't stop for me. Um, but if I want to use that, I can click use it. It'll then give me a copy. Uh, I can see up here if I click crop. This is the red, so if I want to scroll the red forward, it'll crop uh, where the video starts. So let's say I want to start it at this point, halfway through the race or something. Um, and then I can choose where it finishes, and that's good. Let's crop that. I can then add audio tracks if I choose to. Um, say so yes, I'm going to remove those questions. So now I want to add audio tracks. So this is a sound that will play the whole way through the video. If I want to add that, so I can just go down here and press that and record that as we go, uh, or you can add a, uh, some music or something. Uh, and so here it tells you, you know, why add uh, audio tracks, so you can explain the video with your own teaching approach and your own language as you go over it. Uh, you can also add audio notes. So here, um, if I choose to put an audio note, I can slide that down to here. And then if I press audio note, it'll then record. You can see it going up and down at the bottom there as I talk. And it'll record that when I press stop, you can see it then goes, it's up the top there. And so that's my new audio track. And so if I press on it, and that plays for me, right? And I can put them at the end. If I want to put like a quick little summary of the video, I can put it there. Uh, so that's sticking in little audio notes. So when the students get there, they'll listen to me speak before the movie then continues. Uh, these are pre-entered questions from the person who set up this video before me. So this is what they've put there, and then the students enter their answer here. If I click edit, I can change that question if I want to. I can flip it over and see if the person's given any feedback and they haven't. And so if I have a look at the question, why is the A-like asset system the predominant energy system at the start of the race? Right, I could go here and say, uh, because it provides uh, the ATP for the first 
10 seconds um, before the other energy systems um, really begin to produce large amounts of ATP or something like that. Okay, and so now when my students answer the question, they can also get feedback on that question uh, once they've answered it. I'll click save there. Okay, it'll then update everything. Okay, uh, and then we can continue. If I go here and go to quizzes, now I can add extra questions. So let's say I wanna add an extra question here. I click that. It'll then tell me I can add a question. I want to maybe enter a multiple choice question. Uh, so uh, how long does the ALAC acid energy system last? Make sure I actually put black acid. Um, all right, and so down here, uh, I want this one to be wrong, so I change it uh, five seconds. This one I'm going to have to be right, let's say um, 10 seconds. And I can add more answers here, and you can really add quite a large number there. You can make more than one right if you want. So let's say, uh, will it last at 12 seconds? Well, that depends on the intensity. Okay, uh, and then maybe I'll also put in uh, 30 seconds, which it's not going to last that long. Okay, and if I want, again, I can flip this over and say, uh, too long, this will use the lactic acid energy system. Um, and this one I might put feedback on and say, um, ATP, what's sort of creatine system lasts longer than this. Okay, uh, then can save that, and that'll embed that question into my video. Now, when I'm done, and I'm happy with the video and what it looks like, uh, I can then play it and run through it and have a look at what it looks like for the students. Uh, and if I'm happy with that, I'll go up here and I'll click Finish. Now, once I click Finish, I can assign it to a class. So let's say I want to send it to my Year 9 class uh, and my Year 10 class, both of which are completely empty. I want to prevent skipping, uh, so the students won't be able to skip the questions, they have to put an answer in. And if I want, I can even set a due date, so the students have to watch this uh, by the end of this week. So now it's open for them for the next two days, they've got to make sure they watch it by then and no later. Uh, and I can click send, and that'll then send it out to them. Now if I wanted to, I can go back here to this video, there it is there, and it's also going to be up here for Year 10. Uh, I can click share again still, okay, and then I can get this link and share that, or I can embed the video into our learning management system. So whether that be uh, Edmodo or Canvas or something like that, you can embed the video straight in there. You can see down here, I can share it straight into my Google Classroom. So if I press there, it'll then uh, take me to my Google Classroom that this um, class is linked to and put it on that stream for the Google Classroom. Uh, I don't really want to do that, so I'm just going to leave all that. But you can see the direct links and the different ways of sharing it there. You can email it straight to your students. You can post it on Facebook or on Twitter if you like as well. Uh, one of the other options that I had, so if I go back up here to search, let's say this time I want to find a different video uh, and I want to use a TED Talk. Uh, and so let's say... Um, get rid of my search term here at the top. I'm just going to type in health. Okay, uh, so here we have people talking about health. Let's just pick a fairly random uh, one. Let's say this one, and it goes for six minutes, so I'm going to use that. Obviously, I can preview it. So now, if I want to edit it and make it shorter, I can do that. If I want to record audio over the top of this lady's talk, I can do that. If I want to embed my um, own voice and make it stop, um, while the kids are watching it stop and have me explain something or point out that something is really important for their syllabus or for their exam coming up, I can do that. And I can put in all the questions. Um, so let's just uh, stick one question in. Um, what is health? Right? I don't know if this video says anything about that. Uh, I can then put the definition of health on the back if I want to. Uh, and then let's say down later on, I also want to put a comment. Okay, so here I want to say, um, pay special attention to what she is about to say, right? 
And so now my students will see that right before she talks and know that they really need to pay attention. I'm going to click save, okay, and it's going to come up like that for my students. Now when I click finish, you'll see before I assign things to a class, this time I can click here share with anyone. And so now this is perfect for sharing if you have a whole bunch of staff members that want to watch it. Um, you share with anyone and then you get your link and you get your embed code. And then you can email it to your staff or you can put it in Facebook or Twitter uh, or you can just embed this straight into a website or a blog or your learning management system. You can do whatever you like with that embed. Now this is really um, good if you want to get people to actually sign up. Uh, if you want people to sign up to a class and watch it, uh, then you need to create a class and assign it and then tell people what the code is in order to get into the class. But this is just, if you don't want to actually collect the data so much in terms of specific students, uh, if you just want to know that you know most of your class understand it, then this will be fine as well and you don't need to set up a class. But you could share this video with your staff right now, share with anyone um, and click the email button and that'll take you to your email server system that you use at your school. I don't want to spend too much time doing that so I'm going to close it. Okay, so once it's assigned I can then uh, click away from that, uh, make sure it's saved, it saves automatically as things go anyway. Um, if when I export it I choose to send it to these students, okay, or if I choose to create a new class, uh, I can click add class here and create a new class, uh, let's say staff, okay, so I want to add it to the staff uh, and so I'm then going to send it and the staff will have to sign up to watch it. If I want them to watch it before our staff meeting that's next week, I can set the due date for when they need to watch it by and click send and it will then send it to anyone who's in that class. Okay, now the bits that are beneficial about all of this, so once I've created the videos and sent them out, I want to actually have a look at how my students have gone. So if I click here on my actual class that I teach, which is my Sydney FC class, I had um, about half of my class watch a measuring health status video uh, recently, so I can go here and click progress. So this is the progress that I can see with my students. So you can, as I said, only half my kids uh, watched this video the other week uh, because some of them were away and some of them are working on something else at the moment. Uh, and so these are the results that I'm going to get. So these are results by students. And so I can go down here to this student and click on him and it will then run me through and I can see that he's watched the beginning bit twice um, for those first two questions and then once the rest of the way through. It seems like he either got this last question wrong or didn't answer it and I can scroll down and have a look. So this is my first question that I had and he got them all right. So that has got 100% there. Uh, he got what epidemiology is. He worked out who uses epidemiology. Um, he didn't quite get all of these um, different aspects of what epidemiology does not measure uh, but he got most of them here he got that correct he got that correct uh, this correct but the last one he got wrong I think he didn't pay any attention because that's one of the uh, graphs that I talk about in the video uh, and he just has said it's going down going up sorry and the correct answer is that CBD in Australia is going down if I would like to I can click here to add a comment for him and say please pay attention to the graph on CBD and watch this last bit of the video again okay and then I can click send and it will then send him that feedback so I can provide feedback for individual students and I can see this kind of statistical data as we go if I click back here I can then do that for each of my students uh, or at the top here I can click by question and so now I'm actually going to see the results of each question as we go through and I can see straight away that you know of the five students they all know what life expectancy is they know what mortality and morbidity is they understand who uses epidemiology most of them understand what epidemiology uh, does tell us but they don't quite get what epidemiology doesn't measure um, and here they're also not sure about uh, what are that's what are that should not say out uh, measures what are not measures of health status I think um, so or what are measures of health status maybe the outs not meant to be there which might be why they got it wrong uh, and then what does epidemiology measure they don't quite get all that they definitely didn't get the infant thing which probably means they weren't paying attention and this is the last question 
uh, and none, none of them got it right. And I suspect that's actually probably because many of them didn't get there or they skipped through it. So if I actually click on it, let's have a look. Uh, so student said one said going down. Well, none of them actually up here, but the correct answer is going down. A whole bunch of them said that it was going up. And so they didn't quite understand what it meant. Uh, and so I need to reteach that to them next time I see them. And so if they watch this before they come into class, one of the first things I'm going to do is talk to them about reading graphs and trends. Now the other thing I can do is right now up here in the right hand corner, you can see I'm actually looking at this as a homework perspective. If I click on the in class perspective, it's going to actually give me live data on my students. So I click students here. This is now in the classroom. So my students did watch these uh, videos while they were in class. Uh, and so I can go through here and as the students watch the videos, this progress bar will slowly increase. So it starts red, it'll then progress to orange and then go green once they get to about 90% through the video. I also have on the right hand side here, their responses. So as they answer questions, straight away it's going to flag for me if they've gotten it wrong. And if they have, I can quickly click on it and it will take me straight there and I can see, okay, he's just missed one. Uh, so it's not completely wrong. And that tells me where he's up to. All right, I can give him, you actually got, you know, maybe 75% for that one. Uh, but we need to improve that for our next time we have a look at it. And I can talk to him. I could give him the feedback straight away on that uh, answer. And then I can come back here and keep watching my students as they progress. So that gives me quite a lot of data on them. I can even export the data if I want to. I can click export and I can choose to save that data, there it is down here, as a CSV file. Uh, so that I can refer to that later, and if I open that, it'll just have all my students' names and their results with the questions on uh, the top and all those types of things as we normally get. So that is Edpuzzle. Uh, it's one of the great things about it. So it gets to make videos interactive and then it also allows us to collect data on our students uh, it's particularly useful for flip learning for you to watch, get your students to watch videos before they come and then before they get into class you already know if they've understood the video content and you've gotten the chance uh, to analyse the data and know what you need to do when the kids arrive. So if I had said that as a homework task for example and my students didn't get there, uh, didn't get to watch it, the first thing I do to those five kids who didn't watch it is send them to the back to watch it. Uh, I might watch their progress as they go, uh, but I'll also get the other students off and running doing other activities uh, where they're applying their new knowledge and having a look at um, other ways of using it. They might answer some practice questions, write some summaries, uh, have a chat with each other and answer each other's questions to clarify a few things, particularly on reading graphs. I might bring to class a whole bunch of graphs and just hand them out to, each, to the students and have them talk about those graphs to each other. Uh, but straight away I'm getting all that information back uh, so that I'm ready to go into my class and I'm going to really uh, be able to target and differentiate my learning in that class for my students. Okay, so here the Excel thing's finally loading that uh, came down. So you can see my student names down the left and then along the top here are the questions. So we have the percentage of the video watched, uh, they have the correct grade, so uh, how many Marks did they get out of nine, so four, eight, eight. Uh, then we have a grade out of 100, so that's their percentage. Last scene and when they did it. Okay, so it hasn't given me each question on the top. Uh, it's actually just given me a nice brief summary of the information that I gathered through that video. So that's Edpuzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's beneficial for you and I hope you use it as you flip your classroom. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.